I have a thermometer system here. Uh, this is the inside temperature. This is the outside temperature. And I just got up this morning and I checked it. Ah, 35 degrees. So I thought to myself, hey, 35 degrees, nice. Maybe I could ride the bike or something today. <laughs> then I looked out the window and I thought, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to ride my bike today. <laughs> I have my interview with the folks in Malaysia this afternoon at four o'clock, but I can't do it at the apartment. It's on my, the only phone I have is my cell phone. And I, it, that phone doesn't work in my apartment very well. Anybody who's ever tried to have a conversation on the phone with me while I'm home has learned right away. My phone is not reliable. But the Malaysian people can't do Skype. They don't have a good enough internet connection down there, which kind of troubles me. Because, you know, I like the internet. Uh, whatever shall. A week from now, I bet you a week from now, I will be able to tell you what I'm going to be doing next year. Well, I'm, uh, I'm off to catch a taxi to go to the hospital for my annual checkup. I do it today or do it Monday, but I'd rather do it today. Get it out of the way. Ooh, it's snowing. Okay, is it a guy or whoever is using a dustpan? as a snow shovel. We don't get much snow. Why splurge on a on a snow shovel? Um, you might be able to see that there is no plowing. There's uh, there's no equipment for snow plowing. Um, they might have some up in the mountainous regions in the north part of South Korea. But I seriously doubt it. So the streets don't get plowed. You just drive on them until you pack them down a bit. It's probably safer when they're not packed down, but what can you do? Hey, she has a snow shovel. She has an absolute real snow shovel. Brisk business in snow shovels. <laughs> okay, I think I see a taxi down there. They are few and far between. You can probably tell. This guy's shoveling himself out here. No, that wasn't the taxi. Maybe there's one further down. It's gonna be slow going over to the hospital. It's probably gonna cost me double. Okay, that guy's got a homemade uh, snow shovel. So a wooden stick with a flat piece of wood on it. <laughs> anyway, I just finished my checkup. And they have a little coffee shop type thing that I got myself a latte. Funny story, urine test. Um, the lady gave me a little strip of plastic. It's for the pH test. It's got the little color codes on it. She didn't give me a cup, so she said, just go in the bathroom. I went in the bathroom and I saw on the wall was a bunch of little holders with little plastic cups and they had urine in them. Each one had urine in them. I thought, well, I can't use these, they're dirty. So I went back out and said, I need a cup. Well, she didn't tell me that I had to go and ask for a cup. So I went and asked for a cup, got a cup. I went into the bathroom. I t <laughs> so I, I pee into the cup but I didn't know what to do after that. So, of course, in America, you just take it to the nurse or whatever, the attendant, and they do their little magic with it. I don't know, but apparently here, what you're supposed to do is dip the pH. Don't, don't take the urine back out into the uh, hall, into the office. What you do is you dip your pH stick into your cup of urine, and then you take the pH stick out to the attendant who records what he sees. 
I did not. I took the cup and everything out there, and yeah, those foreigners don't know anything. Come from such uncivilized backgrounds, man. This is still coming down. This is this is something. This is some. This no is something else. But it is pretty. This camera is not going to do justice, but that little that little evergreen tree right there is just pretty with the snow on it. Man, look up there. The trees up there on the hill. Snow is pretty if you don't have to go out in it. Also, the blood guy <laughs> couldn't find a vein. You know what that's like when they can't find a vein. Oh, that was fun. I guess uh, some of the taxis have put on some kind of thing on their tires. Wow. Wow. That's really pretty. Really pretty. Now it's starting to come down really heavy. I'm going to see if there's anything to eat here for lunch. Okay, I just couldn't help myself. I needed to make another clip of this because it is so unusual here. And please, uh, northern people from Michigan and Canada, just forgive me. I forgot to wear a belt today, so I have to keep my hand in my pocket to keep my pants up. Um, the only thing vegetarian is the sundu bujige. So, let's go get some sundu bujige. <laughs> Every time I use my left hand, my pants go down. Alright, I'm going to turn the camera off so I don't embarrass myself. Even trash looks nice. <laughs> I had my cup of coffee over at the hospital, so I'm just hanging out here. Um, my coworker Dan was up having lunch. He got his medical checkup too. I saw him at the hospital, so I'm over here. So we had lunch together. I like him. He's pretty cool. And uh, he's been to Malaysia. He's been to Borneo. So he told me all about it. So. Hey, maybe the job's not as nice, not as civilized, but he said they, uh, the country was gorgeous. They got pygmy elephants and, and big lizards and monkeys and orangutans, all kinds of stuff there. I mean, right out in the wild. I think, uh, I think Dan sold me on trying to get this Malaysia job a little harder than I've been working on it. Birds calling mournfully. It's the front of the one he'll go on.